We are back. I hope you had a good three-day weekend. I hope you had a three-day weekend. Come to think of it, I know of uh, two pizza delivery drivers who didn't have the weekend off because uh, I ordered pizza for delivery twice. Sat in my house and watched college football all day on Saturday, and you get hungry. I miss college football. It was good to have it back. It's good to have you back. It is Tuesday, not Monday. It is Tuesday, 7th day of September 2021. This is Wake Up in Anchee Valley. I am Dan Koontz. We had a beautiful weekend. Uh, for the Labor Day weekend. One more gorgeous day today to look at the sunrise behind me over the East Wenatchee Bench and then a significant change in the weather. Things are going to get very unsettled uh, on Wednesday and really right on in to the weekend. Uh, forecast details are coming up as we're getting deeper into September. We start seeing some cooler temperatures, a little bit more unsettled weather. All those details are coming up. Plus uh, what's going on in the, uh, in the world of news, what made headlines over the weekend. We'll have that for you. In just a couple of minutes, highlights from a crazy night of football at Wildcat Stadium in East Wenatchee between the Central Valley Bears and the East Mile Wildcats. A complete highlight package coming your way, plus prep scores from over the weekend. Mariners stubbed their toes yesterday against Houston, but we're still talking about the Mariners and a playoff race in September. We'll take that whenever we can. It's been a rarity over the last two decades or so for that. Uh, plus everything else you need to start your Tuesday. And we're going to re replay the interview I did with Darcy Christopherson, the administrator of the Washington State Apple Blossom Festival. The information she gave us last week is still pertinent today, which is why uh, we'll get that out for you as well. It is a beautiful morning, 55 degrees with just a few high clouds. Let's start our tour around the valley with our Valley View cameras. And this the cross camera is pointed almost due east. Normally we have that pan over to look at the valley, but instead we're looking at the Rock Island area. Malaga tucked behind the uh, bridge there. You can see a little bit of haze, and we're going to see a little bit more smoke and a little bit of haze uh, because what's going to be happening weather-wise is going to be, uh, well, drawing smoke from the fires in Oregon and California into our neck of the woods. That's where the weather, that's where the uh, winds are going to be prevailing. So get ready for slightly hazier conditions, but a gorgeous sunrise this morning. By the way, sunrise 628, sunset 728. Days getting shorter and shorter. We had 88 on Sunday, 86 yesterday. We'll be just about that mark today before we cool down, cloud up, and could even see a thunderstorm tomorrow morning. I kid you not. We'll have that uh, when we get to the weather forecast, which is next on the agenda. Camera number two. We're off to see the top of McNeil Canyon. That is a very tall tower with a camera on the very top of that t very tall tower. That's an spectacular view of the Lake Chelan area. Again, the haze and the smoke from the 25 mile fire. It's still burning. It's been burning for, oh gee, four weeks now. Something along those lines. But good morning to Lake Chelan. Starts getting a little bit quieter on the lake this time of the year. Now the Labor Day weekend is over, although it's still a great place to visit. If you want to avoid all the tourists, now is the time to go. Good morning to Lake Chelan from McNeil Canyon. Camera number three. We say good morning to the Wenatchee Valley. I'm guessing that's the other camera on the heights. We have two of them. That's got to be the east camera, the one that's a little bit lower and a little bit more to the east than our main camera. So Wenatchee does most of the honors today in downtown Wenatchee, heading back to school, heading back to work after the three-day weekend. For the Wenatchee School District kids, they had a four-day weekend. They didn't have school last Friday either. That ain't bad. And camera number four. Oh, gorgeous view. Is that from, uh, I, I'm looking, I think I'm seeing the Cashmere Golf Course at the bottom of my screen. So that's got to be Steins, and it is Steins. Speaking of that, a little bit later on today, uh, we'll be cruising on up to Chelan and visiting with Karen Welch, the fairgrounds manager, because the Chelan County Fair is back after the year off because of COVID. Uh, they open up on Thursday, so we'll be uh, previewing the Chelan County Fair on tomorrow's edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Looking forward to that. Good morning to Cashmere. Good stuff this morning. Now, as I mentioned before, today we're going to have one more day of really what we've had for the last three or four days going into the, the latter part of last week. For one more day, that's today, then a significant change. In fact, there's even the possibility of a thunderstorm. Things are going to get rather unsettled. Uh, showers and thunderstorms are possible. Very quick moving uh, right here in the central Washington area and the Cascades. Uh, and a lot of it depends on how quickly this system is going to move in. Uh, a mid-level wave is going to track up off the Oregon coast and it's going to slide right in to north central Washington and that's going to take all the smoke and the haze from the fires in Oregon and California right into our neighborhood. So you'll be looking to the south 
and to the west tomorrow as these clouds begin to build up. So a um, little bit of a concern for elevated fire risk, obviously, and the already existing fires could get moving because we're going to have some unsettled weather. And again, tomorrow morning, there is the possibility of a thunderstorm. We haven't had one in the Wenatchee area for quite some time, but we wanted to throw that out there. It's a possibility, not a big chance, only about a 20% chance of a thunderstorm, but it's there. All right, now that we got that out of the way, here's your forecast from the National Weather Service. Lots of sunshine, warm temperatures one more time. Again, a little bit hazy as we get deeper and deeper into the day uh, with a high of about 88, which is pretty much what we hit on Sunday and close to it on yesterday. Hazy and smoky tonight. Look at how mild the overnight low is going to be. 67 degrees because the clouds are going to start rolling in and it'll keep the heat pretty close to the surface of the earth tomorrow morning in the early morning hours, basically between seven and about nine, we have about a 20% chance of showers and maybe a pop-up thunderstorm. Lots of clouds in the morning, lots of sun in the afternoon. We'll get up to about 90. Uh, obviously, when you talk about quick moving thunderstorms, we could see the wind pick up in intensity. Not a lot of wind in the morning, but winds could be picking up as this rather rapid system slides out of the area. So Wednesday is gonna be kind of a, kind of a keep your fingers crossed sort of a day. Party cloudy Wednesday night, 62 for the overnight low. Again, very mild, these overnight lows tonight and Wednesday. And usually the overnight lows are more like the mid 50s. Uh, then it's not gonna be too bad. Friday, hazy and warm at about 85 degrees. Saturday, about 84, a little bit cooler on Sunday and Monday. Um, once we get past the thunderstorms, and again, there's not a big chance of thunderstorms, but we gotta mention it. Once we get past that, the big concern starting Thursday, Friday, Saturday, really right on into Sunday and Monday, going to be the hazy conditions uh, as another system sets up and it's uh, so they're going to bring in some smoke from the California and Oregon wildfires they're going to come into the valley on Wednesday the question is are they going to settle down on the valley floor they just don't know quite that yet so there's your forecast all in all fairly outside sort of those possibility with that pop-up thunderstorm tomorrow morning pretty typical mid-September weather for north central Washington going to take a break and when we come back we'll have your Tuesday morning news you're watching wake up in Anchi Valley on the NCW live channel Kids are resilient. I just love their energy. They bounce back so quickly. I love the stories they tell. I love just their charisma, their character. Um, I love to see that subtle smile that you pull out of a kid, you know, when you, you start talking with them about something they really like. I just love what I do, and I can't imagine I would be as happy doing anything else. Let's face it, selling your good used vehicle can be a hassle, if nothing else. Consign your vehicle here at Global Elite Motors. When you do, you'll get the best possible price because of our proprietary selling system. We offer the ability to finance, add warranties, take trade-ins, and much, much more. Each consignment vehicle we represent is thoroughly inspected and marketed to attract qualified buyers. Let us help sell your quality vehicle. Buying a vehicle? Consigning a vehicle? Stop by Global Elite Motors on Wenatchee Avenue at Global Car Care. minutes after the hour beautiful sunrise 55 degrees outside of our studios upper 80s today a little hazy a little smoky late this afternoon and again a morning thunderstorm on Wednesday morning is a possibility certainly some unsettled weather on Wednesday and then sunny and hazy for the balance of the short work week uh, we begin with this story a 43 year old OMAC man was killed in a single car accident this happened yesterday afternoon on interstate 82 about 15 miles south of Ellensburg. According to the Washington State Patrol, Kelly P. Green of OMAC was driving a 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee westbound shortly before 3.30 when his car left the roadway to the right and struck a rock barrier. Green, who was not wearing a seatbelt, was ejected from the Jeep. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The cause of the accident is under investigation. A suspected drunk driver rolled his automobile on Highway 17 outside Moses Lake. This happened early Monday morning, sending both he and his passenger to the hospital. Well, the Washington State Patrol says 24-year-old Jose Juan Cruz of Moses Lake was southbound, approaching North Stratford Road about 3.30 in the morning when his 2000 Toyota Camry left the roadway, struck an embankment, and rolled. 
Juan Cruz was ejected from the vehicle before it came to rest upside down, blocking the southbound lane of the highway. He was transported to Samaritan Hospital in Moses Lake with undisclosed injuries. His passenger, 20-year-old Brahan Contreras Marmalejo, was also transported to the hospital with undisclosed injuries. Firefighters spent a couple of hours early on Monday morning dousing a fire along the Apple Capital Loop Trail. This was just north of Walla Walla Point Park. Shelon County Fire District 1 Battalion Chief Matt Rise said the fire off of Holly Street burned about a tenth of an acre. The cause of the fire not yet been determined. The fire burning in brush and trees was first reported at 5.30 on Monday morning with Shelon District 1 and Douglas County Fire Districts 2 responding. It was near the area where Holly Street turns into North Miller by Dovex Export. The Grand County Sheriff's Office is asking for your help. Uh, somebody apparently stole about $5,000 worth of firefighting gear from a volunteer firefighter's vehicle. The helmet, coat, pants, boots, and a red bag were stolen from the Royal Slope Volunteer Firefighter's Vehicle sometime early Friday morning. Anybody with information is asked to contact the Sheriff's Office at 762 1160. Well, it was supposed to be the first weekend in October like it usually is, but Cashmere's Apple Days, the latest big gathering, to be canceled because of the uptick in COVID-19 cases. The Cashmere Museum, which hosts Apple Days the same time each year, announced earlier in the earlier this earlier last week that the event won't take place. It's the second year in a row that the festival has had to give way because of the pandemic. Another major festival, of course, in Cashmere, big event, the Shalin County Fair begins as scheduled this Thursday. And finally, Anachi Valley College is getting a $95,000 grant to boost the Department of Agri uh, from the Department of Agriculture. The idea is to boost resources for the college's ag students. Wenatchee Valley College is one of 10 colleges and universities participating in the Ag Aid Institute. That's a research partnership to use artificial intelligence for farming programs. The Wenatchee Valley College grant is part of an overall $20 million investment in institute funding. Over the next five years, agriculture students at WVC should notice new computing resources, new crop management technology, and new pathways to graduate programs. Washington State University, by the way, is heading up the project. And that's what's making news on this Tuesday morning. I have to remind myself it's Tuesday, not Monday. I don't believe we have a promo from Grant. Is that correct, Uriah? We do have a promo from Grant. Well, by golly, something's working right this morning with a preview of some of the stories we're working on tonight. Here's the anchor, Grant Olson. Good Tuesday morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, after a warm, sunny holiday weekend, today may be the warmest day of all. I'll have all the details in your North Central Washington weather forecast. And in sports, Eric Grandstrom has a wrap on the weekend's high school football and soccer action, as well as the latest on the Mariners. That and much more coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? Thanks, Grant. Don't forget, we'd love to hear from you, our viewers. There's any number of ways you can go about doing that. Thanks to the World Wide Web, you can uh, go to our Facebook page and use the Facebook Messenger app. Get a hold of us that way. You can email us directly, news at ncwlife.com is our email address, news at ncwlife.com. Or go to our homepage, ncwlife.com, and click on the Contact Us icon at the top of the screen, and it's pretty self-explanatory. When we come back, we'll talk about Mariners baseball. They got shelled by Houston yesterday. You say Kikuchi was not throwing strikes, and when he was, Houston was hitting the ball pretty hard. Plus highlights from a crazy night of football, Friday night in East Wenatchee, all the prep action from over the weekend. Sports this is one minute away. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. Hi, uh, I'm Chuck Dronan, Managing Member at Epla Dolan Retirement and Assisted Living. It's been a tough year for all of us, but especially for those working and living in senior care facilities. Over the course of these many difficult months, our staff at Epla Dolan has been vigilant in adhering to federal and state guidelines to protect and assure the safety of our residents and their caregivers. If you're in need of assisted living for a loved one, give us a call at Epla Dolan. We're here for you. If you are looking for dependable car service and repair, visit the good guys at Quick Lube and Tune. They've been keeping cars and trucks in the Wenatchee Valley running smooth for 35 years. Quick Lube and Tune is your hometown shop for a 10-minute oil change, complete tune-ups, 
alignments, brakes, mufflers, air conditioning service, and more. Get more life out of your vehicle by bringing it to the local guys you can trust at Quick Lube and Tune on South Wenatchee Avenue. All right, let's talk about sports. 15 minutes after the hour, they swept Arizona over the weekend. They passed Oakland in the standings, and then the Mariners went out and just got clobbered by Houston. The final was 11-2 on Monday. You say Kikuchi struggled with his command. He walked four batters in just one inning and a third. He gave up six runs on three hits. Manager Scott Service said, well, that's not what they exactly wanted to see. Yeah, that one uh, got away from us very quickly tonight. Uh, not what we were looking uh, uh, looking for. Obviously, uh, you know, you say um, not uh, not on top of his game or anywhere near it tonight. Just uh, lack of command and, and not real good stuff early on. You know, painting himself in the corner with the you know walking the bases loaded there in the second inning, and then you know not being able to get out of it. At the end of it, you look up. It's an ugly game. Uh, nobody's uh, happy about it. Whatnot. I do know one thing. Uh, you can't get too high. You can't get too low. We lost the ball game tonight. Um, so I think the best thing to say about this one is we come back, get them tomorrow. Uh, we've had some tough losses this year. We've had some tough losses down here against the Astros. And, you know, we will come back and come out and fight tomorrow and get in a ball game and, you know, hopefully have a little bit better result. Mariners and Astros will do battle again 5-10 this afternoon at Minute Maid Park. Logan Gilbert will take on Jake Odorizzi, the only other game in the American League West. Saw A.J. Alexi and three relievers shut out the Angels 4 nothing on a five-hitter. Toronto continued its hot streak as Hyun Jin Roon and three relievers held the Yankees scoreless on five hits. Blue Jays won their fifth in a row 8 nothing over my Yankees. RBI base hits by Nelson Cruz and Brandon Lowe in the top of the 10th gave Tampa Bay an 11-10 win over Boston. Oakland was idle on Monday, but the A's were swept over the weekend by Toronto. So the Jays leapfrogged everybody. This is now the front runner trailing Boston for that final American League wildcard spot. The Yankees' lead for the first spot is down to just a half a game in front of the Red Sox. Seattle's three games back. Oakland, three and a half games back. Weekend didn't go so well for our area college football teams. I watched the whole thing. The Huskies laid a big, fat egg. Dylan Morris intercepted three times. Montana goes into Seattle and shocks the dogs. 13-7. The Cougars cooed it again. They gave up a seven-yard touchdown pass with 11 seconds remaining to lose to Utah State, 26-23. I couldn't believe either one of those games. Eastern Washington went into double overtime at its opener at UNLV, but the Eagles came out on top, 35-33, and J.J. Lemming threw five touchdown passes to lead Central over Eastern New Mexico, 66-24. The football weekend began with a barn burner on Friday night at Wildcat Stadium between the Eastmont Wildcats and the Central Valley Bears. Eastmont at one point led 27-7 at halftime. And then the Bears said, we're not done. We're not giving up. Grant Olson and Eric Kuntz had the call here on the NCAA Live channel. In the slot is Corbin Keyes, right side in motion now. Handoff up the middle again. Peterson's got some room up the middle into the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. 13-yard touchdown run for the sophomore, Gunnar Peterson. Boy, that hole was wide open. Yeah, it was a great trap play right in the middle, and they Central Valley had nobody there. Scored on their last possession. Can they do it here? The Wildcats lead at 7 0. Gale under center. Handoff. Here's Corona on the right side. Boy, he's a tough runner. Inside the five. Is he going to get in? He does. Touchdown from 12 yards out. Abshire again in shotgun. A fullback in there this time as well. And he's lead blocking for brother Zach Abshire. And he runs it in for a touchdown. Four-yard touchdown run. Corona in motion. He's going to get the handoff this time. Great block on the left side. Corona cuts it back up. He's got room. 35-30. Middle of the field is all his. He cuts back to the sideline. 10. Touchdown. Wildcats, 54 yards. Now 24 seconds. Ruffin's in motion. He's going to get the handoff this time. Left side cuts back up into the end zone. Did he get there? Touchdown, Wildcats. 11 yards for Austin Ruffins. Also back in there is the uh, running back, Zach Abshire. 
Here's Luke back to pass. Beautiful spiral down the middle of the field. Touchdown, 40 yards from Abshire to Hudson Dayton. All right, third down and seven. Big play to come right here. Gale, the snap, looking right. He's going to put it up in the air. And who's got it? I think he caught it for a touchdown. And he did. Touchdown, Wildcats. What a catch by Logan Schneider. One foot in is all you need. And I think that's all he had in. So first down at 10 again for Central Valley as they are on a pretty nice drive here now late in this ball game. Here's Abshire, he rolls out to his left, a rocket into the end zone, Saunders, a catch for a touchdown. Great throw, great catch. Here's the kick, the snap was good, the hold was good, and the kick is good. Also in there, Corbin Keys. And Ivan Corona, who's in motion. Boy, a mix-up on that play. Lucky it wasn't fumbled, and I think it was. Are you kidding me? Nope. Eastmont fumbles it away and gives CV a chance to tie this up. Wow. Wow. Mm. That looked like confusion from the very start, and that confusion could cost Eastmont this football game. All right, here we go. Third down and five. Ball at the four-yard line. 13 seconds left. Abshire wide open. Touchdown Central Valley to Saunders. Just a little keeper. Not fake it and go. Here's his brother. Is he going to get in there? I don't think he did. Yes, he did. He did. No indication what? yet. I think he is shorty. I don't think he got there. Holy cow, how about that Eastmont defense? When they needed to hold, they held. And it looks like they'll hold on to a 33-31 win. Yes, quite the game on Friday night. Eastmont holds on. Again, the final 33-31. Other big nine action from Friday night. Southridge stopped Davis 26-21. Sunnyside powered past Prosser 34-23. Ike edged Sela 14-12 and Bothell, which tastes awful. Manhandled Moses Lake on Saturday, 56 to 14. In Caribou Trail League play, Cashmere clocked LaSalle 21 to 7. Natchez Valley cutting down Cascade 21 to 8. Chelan bettered Brewster 41 to 12. Okanagan, no real problems against the Jackrabbits. They beat Quincy 41 to nothing. In B League play, Anyat edged St. John Endicott 58 to 44. Pomeroy pummeled Waterville Mansfield 84 to 6. Manson claimed a 14 to 12 win over Clay Ellum Roslin, and Lake Roosevelt rallied for a 12 to 7 win. Over Chihuahua, girls soccer openers on Saturday. Pullman shut out Chelan 1-0. Cashmere doubled up on Montesano 4-2. Eastmont earned a 3-1 win at Sela. We got girls soccer tonight. The Eastmont Wildcats and the Cashmere Bulldogs will do battle at Wildcat Stadium. Sebastian Miraga and Matt Weisen will have the call pregame 645. Wildcat Stadium tonight. What else do we have going on in the world of soccer today? Chelan travels to Clay Elam Roslin at 5. Manson will host Bridgeport. Quincy welcomes a Friday at 6, and other 7 o'clock games have Cascade visiting Wenatchee, and Moses Lake will host Lewis St. Clark. I wonder if Sacagawea will be there as well. I don't know. And those are just some of the games that people are playing. On the 7th day of September, I had five obscure holidays to choose from. Today is National Grateful Patient Day, National Salami Day. I love a good salami. National Acorn Squash Day, National Neither Snow Nor Rain Day, which is fine because it ain't going to snow and it ain't going to rain today. Today is all about beer. Mm, beer. Yes, it's National Beer Lovers Day. Your grains and your hops and your barley and whatever. Uh, brewing beer and the process of making beer predates history. Nobody really knows how long this has been going on. Somebody somewhere figured it out. Um, the colonists, the colonists in Virginia brewed beer. William Penn was a big beer brewer. Samuel Adams was both a beer brewer and a patriot. Uh, he still has a bunch of uh, beers uh, hanging around there. Of course, we here in the United States, we own our beer living uh, to basically German immigrants during the mid-1800s. Uh, they brought the best beer with them, and down the road you go. Uh, it takes years and years of training and education to be a first-class 
brewmaster. And now here in the Wenatchee Valley, we're starting to get all kinds of cool beers that you can choose from, whether you're into ales or lagers or stouts or whatever the case may be. Wenatchee's turning into a little old beer town, and I got no problem with that. National Beer Day. Mmm. Beer. It is 25. Not yet. I got to work. 25 minutes after the hour. Today in history. 100 years ago today, 100 years ago today, the very first Miss America pageant was held in Atlantic City, New Jersey. There was a pageant the year before. It went away. It went okay. It was not in Atlantic City. The next year, the organizers, the Atlantic City Chamber of Commerce or whatever, said, hey, we want to drive people to Atlantic City, and it worked. 100,000 people showed up to watch the two-day Miss America pageant, which uh, was held 100 years ago today. The very first Miss America, Miss D.C. She's in the picture. I believe she is uh, third from the left. Yes, third from the left. The very first Miss America, Margaret Gorman. Now, as you all know by now, the Miss America pageant has had all kinds of controversies and issues over the last 20 years or so. Uh, it was, at one point in the 1960s, the highest rated yearly television program in America. It is not anymore. And maybe they should have taken a little advice from the very first Miss America, Margaret Gorman, who said, and I'm quoting now, I never wanted to be Miss America. It wasn't my idea. I was bored by it all. I really want to forget the whole thing. <laughs> and that was for the first Miss America. Oh, well. September 7th, 1921. Uh, the Blitz began September 7th, 1940, 81 years ago today. Uh, the German Luftwaffe began to bomb London. And they did it again and again and again in the daylight and in the nighttime for 57 consecutive days, the German Luftwaffe kept dropping bombs all over London, in Greater London and downtown London. Many hundreds of civilians were killed. Uh, they had to go sleep in the subways, and yet they got through it. This was actually a ginormous military blunder by the German Luftwaffe, by the Nazis, because the Royal Air Force was about gone. They, they, were, they were out of planes, they were exhausted. But because the Luftwaffe be decided to bomb London and not the air bases where the RAF was located or the radar stations where they could keep track of things, the, uh, the Royal Air Force was able to regroup and rebuild themselves over the two-month period when all Germany was doing was bombing London and trying to kill civilians and take, them, take their morale out. But instead, it gave the RAF a chance to recover and retake the skies. The Blitz began on the state 81 years ago today. And happy 42nd birthday to the behemoth that is ESPN. The Entertainment and Sports Programming Network debuted on September 7th, 1979 with SportsCenter. Da -da -da, da -da -da. Uh, it is headquartered, of course, in Bristol, Connecticut. It is the business in Bristol, Connecticut. It could have been in Plainview, Connecticut. That was where they originally going to house ESPN Studios and headquarters. But Plainview, Connecticut had a, the town prohibited buildings with satellite dishes, C-band dishes, the big ones, on their roofs. So they said, sorry, Plainville, we've got to have that. And they said, sorry, it's in our city code, no C-band dishes. So they went to Bristol, Connecticut. Oops, for Plainville, anyway. The very first sporting event ever broadcast on ESPN. Again, they debuted at 7 p.m. Eastern time with Sports Center. Not a lot of people were watching, September 7th, 1979. And then they went to their very first live sporting broadcast ever. It was the Best of Nine Professional Men's Fast Pitch World Series between the Milwaukee Schlitz and the Kentucky Bourbons. Men's Fast Pitch Professional Softball. The very first sporting event ever showed on ESPN. Now they're owned by Disney. 30 minutes after the hour, birthdays. Legendary football coach Paul Brown, born in the state in 1908, died at the age of 82 in 1991. He, uh, he was the innovator in almost all things that we take for granted now in the world of football. He was the first coach to not only develop a playbook, but have his players study the playbook. They had to take tests on it. He was the first coach to send plays in from the sidelines. This is, he called all the plays. Before that, the quarterback always called all the plays. He was the first coach to film 
his own team's games and use them to scout his opponents. He was the first one to hire a full-time staff of paid assistants. He was the first coach to, well, he invented the modern face mask, the practice squad. He invented the draw play, among many, many other things. Paul Brown, born in the state in 1908. And Charles Hardin Holly, Buddy Holly, born on this state. Well, we miss Buddy. Uh, my favorite, you know that. He, uh, my, my love for Buddy Holly and his music is, uh, is total. He invented the rock and roll band, four guitars, bass drums. That was Buddy Holly and the Crickets. He only recorded for about 19 months, but in those 19 months, uh, he left behind uh, rock and roll treasures that still sound as fresh and original and alive today as the day they were recorded. Buddy Holly, my all-time favorite rocker. Born of this state in 1936. We lost Buddy on February 3rd, 1959, at the age of 22. Going to take a break. Got an opinion from Mike Mad Dog McNaughty, and then we're going to replay my conversation with Darcy Christofferson. Why are we talking about Apple Blossom in September? Well, for one thing, Mamma Mia, the Apple Blossom musical, is this month. Darcy, coming up. You're watching Wake Up at Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. You love to help others. You need a solid career. You can have it all with help from Charter College. Our 10 month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take patient vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain medical records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, visit chartercollege.edu because we work to get you to work. Don't make plans to store your boat for the off season until you've checked out the super package from Bob File Boats and Motors. With this package, you just drop your boat off for winterizing, and they take it from there. When you pick it up in the spring, it'll be ready to go for the next season. There are too many features in the Super Package to list here, so get the details, 509-884-3558. Bob Boats and Motors, we're dealing. Bob Five's gonna make you smile. What you're doing is ridiculous. Well, I mean, you might as well throw up a screen door to block the summer smoke. Sometimes it gets When cool. we breathe in the wildfire smoke, we are ingesting hazardous chemicals such as acetic acid and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. A lot of bad stuff, okay? Well, yeah, that's why we... The cardboard ain't gonna cut it. Yo. Go to shlimpud.org slash save today. From public health to politics to education and everything in between. Come along with me as I take a look at the important stories and issues that matter to all of us here in North Central Washington. I'm a freelance journalist and opinion columnist who has covered everything from illegal militias to mom and pop shops, and now I'm bringing my unique, historically rooted perspective to the stories that matter most. I'm Dominic Bonney. Join me for a daily dose of on NCW Life. Badger Mountain Brewing is proud to announce the grand opening of our new kitchen. Come try out our new menu featuring fabulous steaks, prime rib, gourmet burgers, and seafood grilled up by experienced meat master, Chef Galen Goodman. To complement your mouth-watering meal, Badger Mountain Brewing features 14 in-house crafted beers, an alcohol-free root beer infused with 11 different herbs and spices, three different ciders, and a great wine selection. Don't miss out on the best meats and the best brews down at Badger Mountain Brewing, located at 1 Arondo Avenue across the tracks from the Pibus Market. This is Mike, Mad Dog Mike Nadi, and everybody's entitled to my opinion. Now, people on both sides of the political spectrum are comparing the others to Nazis. Good for them. Republicans are accused of being white supremacists, and Democrats are accused of being trying to disarm the populace and have the government replace religion. Now, what I wonder is this, is that if these social justice warriors on either side face the consequences and same risks 
that confronted those who actually criticized the real Nazis, would they be so free with their critical venom? I mean, if I risk being sent to a concentration camp at best or executed at worst, would I still feel as free to open my mouth and complain about what the president's doing? Would you? Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Campfire North Central Washington, serving youth ages 3 to 18. Register today in one of Campfire's programs. Club members meet regularly with volunteer leaders to learn responsibility, sharing, cooperation, and citizenship. When a child is involved in Campfire, they will be actively learning and engaged in activities, encouraged to learn new skills, feel a part of the group, learn to work in a team setting, participate in planning, goal setting, and making lasting memories. What is home? A place to gather, a place to grow, provide shelter for the ones we love, eat, drink, restore, build trust. It's a place to rest when the work day is done, a place to find quiet after a night of good fun. What an honor we have at Guild to help own, finance, create, pave the way to live in home. When your heating or cooling system is giving you trouble, call the Diagnostic Doctor from Dix Heating and Air Conditioning. Here's the culprit right here. All joking aside, when you call Dix, you're calling 35 years of experience at customer service right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Dix strongly believes in repairing before replacing and they service all major brands of HVAC units. Crystal's Restaurant and Lounge in Leavenworth has a warm environment to enhance your dining experience. Serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Crystal's Intimate Lounge is a wonderful place to relax and dine with beautiful views of the mountains. Do you have a special occasion coming up? Call Crystal's to reserve their event space. Whether your event is grand, intimate, or casual, Crystal's provides unforgettable food and superb service. Crystal's Restaurant and Lounge, proud to be serving fabulous food and drinks. Green Motion e-bikes have rolled into Wenatchee. We've got fun, affordable e-bikes for the whole family. Portable e-bikes that fit right in the trunk of your car. Fat tire mountain bikes plus unique vintage style bikes you won't find anywhere else. Get some exercise with pedal assist or just cruise up to 20 miles per hour with the throttle. Starting under $1,000, Green Motion e-bikes are affordable fun for the whole family. Welcome back to Wake Up in H.E. Valley. I am Dan Koontz. I know it's August, but it's time to start thinking about Apple Blossom. For one thing, the Apple Blossom musical is next month instead of April and May. That's one thing to talk about. Plus, we're closing in on the possibility of getting girls interested in royalty. we got the auction coming up. And you know what that means, making her very first appearance on Wake Up in H.E. Valley Festival Administrator Darcy Christofferson. Danny, say hi. Does Darcy say hi? Hi. Darcy hi. says hi. It is, uh, for the record, it's Tuesday as we tape this. It's Darcy's birthday. So happy birthday. Oh, it is. Yes, yes. I'm 29. Yes. 29 today. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know it. It's remarkable. I should start saying I'm 39. I think we're 49. <laughs> you, look re you look remarkably good for your age. You've aged much better than I have. I can tell you that much right now. Well, you're sweet. Um, let's get this go in chronological order. What the okay. heck? I had a chance earlier to talk to the good folks at the Numerica Performing Arts Center. They are excited to have Mamma Mia on the stage. Um, granted, it's not when it, it's traditional time as the Apple Blossom musical, but the show must go on. It will be going on at, at the pack. It opens on September 15th. It does. It does. And opening day is September 15th, and that's always Apple Blossom night. So we will be there. Uh, we'll have three royalty members in attendance. We'll have uh, current queen, Brooke Perez, and then we'll have princesses from 2020, uh, Kelly and Kaya there. So that'll be kind of fun for them to experience the musical it'll be a little different for them but still it'll be great so we're super in fact i just got the tickets all organized for for the people to go our apple blossom people to go on the 15th so we're excited i'm so excited that they finally get to do it you know they only had it until december and then they would have lost the rights to it so yeah. it, it's good that we're <laughs> able to do it i really encourage people to go just I don't know if everybody remembers, but in the 2020 pageant, we honored Music Theater of Wenatchee as our Grand Marshals. 
and they did a little snippet of uh, Mamma Mia at pageant. It was so fun. It got everybody so excited. So and it's on YouTube. You can find it on YouTube. That oh yeah, you got to yeah. watch both of them. It's, it's really good. Yeah, you got to watch both of them before you go. I think. But and how long is it? Music theater with Angie and Apple Blossom. That marriage has been going on for. Oh, 50 over years? fifty years. Yeah. yeah, I mean, over fifty years for sure. My year it was Oklahoma. I remember that uh, in '85. But it, it's been going on forever, and it's just such a great thing for our community just to have, you know, uh, art in our community. And we do have such amazing talent, and it's you literally always sit there. I always do after it's over, and I think I cry every year, not because of the show, but just like, wow, this is so cool what our community has with talent. It just always amazes me. If things come and go. Uh, some things just have a natural lifespan, but other things you can count on every apple blossom. There's always going to be a Stamont Grows Grand Parade. There's always going to be a Kai Scarborough Youth Parade. Even if they have to be combined, they're going to do it. <laughs> There's always going to be a, 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 a musical. There's always going to be the carnival. Some things simply don't change. Yep. And people like that continuity. People they like do. it. They do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons why we survived COVID. Is, is because people love the festival and they love that continuity, they love the events, and some of them, some people don't go to everything, but people go to one thing that they go to every single year, and that's what's great about our festivals. We have such a wide variety of events and activities for people to do that they, they I don't think they ever want it to go away. Did you hear from your friends at uh, Lilac and Rose and some of the others? It just didn't happen. They said, how did you, how did you pull off still having an Apple Blossom Festival and we didn't? What yeah. Did, what's your secret? I, I, I always feel guilty saying, I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's our, really our community. It's, we just have this, this uniqueness of putting on this festival that's been going on now for 103 years, and people just love it. And you know, like I just said, it, it, whether it's going to the carnival every year or going to everything every year, it just is something that you just can't make up. It just happens, and I try to explain that to them, that it's just a, a matter of, I think one of the main things that helped us was bringing it back to our community in the mid-90s, you know, where it really is just a community celebration. We love having out-of-town people come here, but our goal is to celebrate our community and have our community enjoy the festival, and I think that has been one of the key key elements to the success well, of it. Well, at the, st at, the <coughs> at the risk of sounding somewhat political, uh, divorcing it from the Wenatchee Valley Chamber of Commerce and having the Apple Boston Festival as a standalone entity, mm -hmm. to me, was the game changer. It really was. I was on the board then, and that was a big, big decision for us to, to do. In fact, I worked, when I was hired, I worked three months for the chamber, and then our fiscal year changed, and then we became on our own. So that was an interesting transition for sure. Uh, but I agree, that, that is huge, and that is something that a lot of festivals don't do. You know, they're hosting groups like our Wenatchee Appalarians, they run their festival. So there is no organization or, or 501c4 um, that creates their festival for them. And I think that's a key too, to you know just have a little bit of a staff to just kind of direct and keep the continuity, but yet let the new people bring in change. So I think that's, that. I'm, I'm with you. That was a big thing. <laughs> and Darcy's typical phone call to, to people goes something along these lines. Hi, it's Darcy, could you possibly, and then they just say yes. <laughs> She doesn't have to finish the sentence. That's not true. I do get I do get no's. Okay. Well, I do, but I keep trying. <laughs> yeah. I, they know that I'll call them back the next year. So I Speaking do get Speaking of no's. trying, uh, the auction is again uh, back this year. Uh, they was they had one. Well, that's a long story. I, know. I don't want to get out. Uh, circle October twenty third on your date. October twenty third. Uh, the theme is still what was supposed to be the one before, which was the 70s? Is yeah, we're right? calling it the 25th Squared Annual <laughs> Auction. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was a 70s theme. It's a 70s theme this year. I know people that already have their costumes that they've literally had for two years. So uh, we have 15 tables sold already. Uh, we like to have at least 30. So we're halfway there, which is great. It, it's always a little bit slower in the summer. Um, once Labor Day weekend hits and the kids get back to school, people kind of start thinking fall. Um, we always love to have new people come to our auction. In fact, I think we have two new tables that just want to go. And it's super fun for businesses to sign up. We kind of call it a, an employee out night. And a business will buy a table and employees will go and have fun. And, and just by going, you are you're already donating to the to the festival so it's not like you have to go and spend ten thousand dollars we would love if you came and spent ten thousand dollars but we really 
you know, like people having fun, spending a little bit of money, hanging out with friends. And I think this year, more than anything, it'll be a blast because people haven't been able to connect um, for 18 months. I've been to, <clears throat> I don't know how many of the auctions. I've hosted <laughs> any number of the auctions as a master of ceremonies. Everybody has fun. Yeah. It's a blast. It it's is. just a, every, your face hurts on Sunday morning because you're l- laughing. It and does. So Isn't much. that funny? Yeah. You just wake up and you're just so happy. I mean, everybody's yeah. dressed up and happy to see each other. And I always say it's kind of like we've been in not hibernation, but in the summer we're all doing things with our families and our friends. And and then in the fall we all kind of get back together and it's like okay now we're on to the next next phase of our our friendships and whatever. So. It's really fun for everybody to, to get together. And we're really encouraging people to come up with new ideas for us to auction. You know, if you have a VRBO and you want to donate it to us for a weekend, that's a great thing that you could donate and then the dollar amount becomes a sponsorship level. Um, and we're really encouraging people to do things like that. Seahawk tickets, Mariners tickets. If you have a weekend that you're not sure if people are going to use the tickets, we'll take them and mm-hmm. we'll auction them off. and. And we've had people come in with $500 and say, I have no idea what to do. What do you want? What can I do with this money? So we'll create like an adventure. Like one year we did this treehouse experience and two couples brought us money and then somebody bought it and had a blast staying the night in a treehouse and hiking a hill and it was super fun. So and there's a sizable group of people who just come to do the sign at auction because there's certain yeah. things that they want. Oh yeah. And they don't like the idea of I have to hold the paddle up. They right. That they're, that's not their thing, but yeah. they still really want that particular item. And yep, we definitely have a diverse crowd. You know, it's it's the people that like to wander and, and do silent and then the people love to raise paddle. We have a lot of those too. So just come, it's a great experience. And once you go, as you know, once you go, you want to go every year. It's just really a lot of fun. Again, October 23rd. Uh, by the way, everything we're talking about is appleblossom.org, mm-hmm. appleblossom.org, you're good to go. Uh, next up for you as uh, senior girls out there, doesn't matter if you go to the Wenatchee or Eastmont or you're homeschooled or private schooled or whatever. Uh, it's time to start thinking about royalty. I think they're going, it's August. I know. Can you believe but, it? But it's uh, it's time to at least plant the seed. And I'll you let you do that since she knows a little bit about <laughs> being in royalty. Yeah, school starts tomorrow. So uh, it's a really good opportunity for parents and girls to go, senior girls. Uh, you must have a 2.5 uh, 2.75 GPA going out of your senior year. So you go into your senior year with a 2.75 GPA, and then you're eligible to run for, for royalty. And we have everything online right now. So you can check out the royalty manual. You can uh, sign up for the mandatory meetings, which are on December 7th. And what the mandatory meetings are is it's an opportunity for us to explain to the senior girl and parents on what it takes to be an apple blossom, um, how much time a, a commitment it is, And you have to attend that meeting, and so does a parent. But you can sign up now for it. You can fill out your application to run right now if you want to. You can read the royalty manual. You can watch the slideshow that we have um, just about the outfits that you're going to need and all that kind of stuff. Every question you may have is going to be answered by it. It's like an 80-page PDF. Which I don't know why we didn't do that sooner. (laughs) We used to do everything at the mandatory meeting, and we still do. But now it's like, well, why can't they read it two months in advance? And, And it's no secret. So we just started, we did that last year because of COVID. And it's like, wow, we need to keep doing that again. Because people walked into the meeting already kind of asking questions from what they, they read, which was way better. So. And you bring up an important point, and it should be a point. I can't believe we've never actually talked about this before. Uh, the Apple Blossom uh, Board of Directors is a group of volunteers that constantly rotates in and out. You serve mm-hmm. a term, and then you're out, and new blood comes in. And there's a reason for that, so you mm-hmm. just don't have the same old yeah. group of people making the same old decisions because those fresh new ideas aren't so fresh anymore. Absolutely. We actually have three-year terms. Three-year so terms. we have three-year terms, and then then after your three years, then you're off. And we do bring people back. You know, we, we a lot of times people take a year or two off, and, and they'll come back. Or they're on the board, and they're a chairperson also, so they're still considered kind of with us because they're chairing something. So like Linda Hagelin, you know, she's chaired mm-hmm. Youth Parade for 10 years and was on the board for five. And so she's been around she forever. She's DG, she's done yeah. it all. But so. it is nice, although this year due to COVID, a lot of, we just kept our board. Um, smart we move. just felt that our poor board didn't really have an opportunity to have a real festival. No, they didn't. And uh, we felt, let's just keep everybody. So we, we kept everybody. I think we had one spot open, two spots open. And uh, we brought in Wendy Fofe and Lori Reed. We felt Lori Reed needed to come back too, since she really didn't have a year. So, 
um, it'll be fun. So for us this year, it's kind of a lot of the same people. But you're right. We, we do that on purpose. And same with the director general. You know, a lot of boards have the president serve as past president. And we quit doing that in 1995. I'll never forget Jeff Smith. Um, he was our director general then. And he's like, I'm done. And I don't mm -hmm. want to be the person to say, you're doing it wrong. You know, so we are like, okay, so the past has to go. And it's really hard at first, but then they get it when... Which is it. also the exact same thing in reverse for the, the DG works their way up to the position right. of being the director general. You know three years in mm -hmm. advance you're going to be the DG at this particular festival, yeah. so you, you learn the ropes from the people who have already done it. Yeah, we have program director, and that person just, we, we encourage them to always go to all the programs, the grand parade meetings, the youth parade meetings, entertainment meetings, just to kind of learn how all that stuff happens. And then the assistant director general is kind of the finance person so they work with the budget with me and you know anything that has to do with finances so then by the time you're director general and we talk about you know having to pay this amount of money for porta potties the that you'll know because you signed the check to pay for porta potties so you know how much that is so it's really worked out great for us and that was something we started probably in the early 90s too or the mm -hmm. late 90s because it used to just be dg and assistant dg and we felt we needed that one more year to kind of Trained. Which is why I'll never be DG because I can't even balance my checkbook. <laughs> you just get in the hoop. Well, now it's easy. They have QuickBooks and all that. Oh, it does okay. it all for you. <laughs> yeah. Things without. Uh, and without we have Cordell Near, so oh, hey, there you, you know go. they there do all they do everything for By us. By the way, so. how's how's retirement treating Jeffrey? I haven't seen him in a long well, time. Well, I know he's traveling a lot. Okay. I know he's traveling a lot. I saw him at Costco. He was having a barbecue, so okay. he was loading up on. You probably heard stuff. his laugh from yes, a block and a half yes, away. Yes. So. Yes. That's my favorite thing about his retirement party is they had one of those buttons that you push and it says laugh. And I have it sitting right at my desk. Boy, that got me through a lot of sad COVID moments. <laughs> We're talking about Jeff Neer of uh, Cordell Neer who retired gee, about a year and a half ago yeah. now. Long time volunteer. During COVID. Uh, with the Washington State Apple Blossom Festival. He's one of those guys who did it all. He was also yep. uh, for many, many years in charge of making sure that the judges do their thing uh, and all the numbers add up when it comes to royalty. So, uh, musical, auction, mandatory meetings. Uh, are we done for a while? Is that it? We I think we're meetings? done. You know, one thing that we're keeping is uh, last year due to COVID, we didn't have any of the judging take place in the schools. Uh, it used to be that speech day, 50% of the vote was uh, the students and 50% of the vote was out-of-town judges. And because we couldn't go into the schools last year, we made it all out-of-town judges. And we felt that we needed to do that again this year just because going in, we don't know if we'll still be allowed to go into schools. Who knows what's going to happen? And we just didn't want to have that added stress be there for the girls or us in planning. So everything will be done with out-of-town judges. So we'll have five out-of-town judges choosing the top 10, and then we'll have a different five out-of-town judges doing pageant. And everything will be at the Performing Arts Center. So thanks to NCW Live channel, we will be doing streaming of everything that's top 10. And then pageant, of course, will be live on, on TV. So Looking we're super to. excited about that. That was the one thing that we, we just loved was just having it all at the pack. And you guys knew what to do at the pack and could leave your stuff there. I mean, it was just such, it was just great. From a logistical standpoint, it, it worked out great. Nothing wrong with the one HSC Auditorium. No, it to work just... With, but but it was just it was uh, it made for I think a better broadcast overall. Well, we never thought about it before, but you know it's kind of like the the auditorium was the Wenatchee girls' home ground, you In know, way, and yeah. you just never really th I never thought of it like that. But it's like well, might as well just have it neutral. So we could hold it right in the middle of the Senator George Cellar Bridge. Yeah, that wouldn't work. That out wouldn't work out. No, it'd so, be really cold. Uh, yeah, well, it's in February. What <laughs> it thinking? would be really cool. And, and we'll close out our conversation with Darcy Christopherson, who, by the way, is making her very first appearance in Waco Financial Valley. <laughs> by, by noting this, we talked about tradition and yet flexibility, and, and I think the Apple Blossom Festival, the volunteers, the sponsors, the people who participate uh, is a perfect example of that. It's not that we're going to do this every year because we've done it this way every year. You have the structure, the infrastructure, to understand the importance of tradition, but at the same time, mm -hmm. you're not afraid to change things. Yep. Like keeping the out-of-town judges or going to the Numerica Pack and away from the Wenatchee High School Auditorium. Those kinds of things make it thrive, which is why it's last 103 years. A lot of festivals haven't. A lot of festivals yeah. have simply petered out. We're just going stronger than ever. We so, are. We are. Yeah. And we, we have a young board. You know, uh, half of our board is, you know, 35 and under, which is is great. And that's what it was, you know, when I started. I w when I started as a board member, I think I was 26, 27 years old. When so I started three years helping. ago, because today's Jeez. your 29th yeah, birthday. Yeah, today's my 29th <laughs> birthday. So it's, 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 that's one thing that we've done is just kind of keep it fresh. Mm -hmm. And 
and you know we have a young Craig Field he's our program director he'll be director general in 2023 so it, it's important to kind of keep that keep that going mm -hmm. for sure absolutely uh, appleblossom.org on the World Wide Web, which, by the way, is catching on. I'm on record on this. This whole internet thing is going to be big. People know what internet is, finally. I know. This is I know. And social media? Yeah. yeah. They're just amazing. I still have a dial-up. <laughs> appleblossom.org making a very first appearance on Wake Up on Anchee Valley, Fiscal Administrator Darcy Christofferson. Danny, you have to say bye-bye. Darcy, say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Darcy, say bye-bye. We'll be right back. Things have changed in the motorsports industry. Short supply and high demand have emptied showrooms. But what hasn't changed are the experts at Doghouse Motorsports. They are here to help you reserve the machine of your choice. Stop by and check out the latest 2022 Husqvarna motorcycles, UBCO, and intense electric vehicles, and other new additions to the Doghouse Motorsports family of high quality products. Over the last year and a half, the industry has absolutely changed, but the Doghouse is still your best option for all your power sports needs. Hey folks, Carrie here from Blueberry Hills, here to welcome you back to all the delights of both indoor and outdoor dining. As things continue to normalize, you can expect the same great experience that's made Blueberry Hills a true family favorite for the last 20 years. We've added a few new items to the menu, but not to worry, because we're still serving up your old favorites too. So come on out to Blueberry Hills, where people fall in love at the very first bite. Now at Boswell's, get up to $1,500 stressless credit to put toward additional seating and accessories. Or save $500 on stressless signature base recliners and ottomans, or recliners with classic power. It's time for stressless. Proud to be endorsed by the American Chiropractic Association. Shop Boswell's, 2915 Easy Street in Wenatchee. Kids are resilient. I just love their energy. They bounce back so quickly. I love the stories they tell. I love just their charisma, their character. Um, I love to see that subtle smile that you pull out of a kid, you know, when you, you start talking with them about something they really like. I just love what I do, and I can't imagine I would be as happy doing anything else. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Kerry Condotta. This is the 12th District TV show, aired eight times every week on NCW Life TV. We cover business and politics like no one else does it because I've been there and done it. 30 years self-employed, 16 years in the House of Representatives, and 12 years running campaigns across the state of Washington. That resume means you're getting information you can't get anywhere else. This is the 12th District. I'm Kerry Condotta. Arctic Refrigeration and Heating has been providing heating and cooling services in our valley since 1984. Arctic offers a variety of refrigeration and heating services, proudly now selling Bryant Systems. Heating and air conditioning for your home or business. Commercial refrigeration service for your coolers, freezers, and prep tables. And now, full service on gas fireplaces for your home or business. Whatever it takes, Arctic Refrigeration and Heating, the temperature experts. Okay, we always wrap up this program where we began this program, the weather forecast. First of all, there is a chance of some thunderstorms tomorrow morning. Things are going to get a little unsettled. There's a wave uh, that's going to bring in some uh, smoke from the fires over Oregon and California. It's going to come in tonight into the early morning hours. We're going to have some unsettled weathers. We do have uh, the possibility of some gusty winds, an isolated thunderstorm. This wave, however, that's coming in is going to be moving very quickly which is why we're also looking at windy conditions at times uh, tomorrow. But we can't rule out a thunderstorm on Wednesday morning for the central Washington area and the Cascades. That being said, your forecast for the rest of this Tuesday, quite a bit of sunshine, but some smoky conditions expected later on today. We'll get up to about 88 degrees. Look how warm it's going to be tonight, overnight. 67, that's the cloud cover from that incoming wave we talked about. It's also ushering in some warmer air. So warmer air, unsettled conditions, maybe a thunderstorm on Wednesday with a high of 87. And we're looking at fairly hazy conditions Thursday into the weekend as those area fires are going to pick up in intensity because of the winds that are coming our way. That's it for us. Have a great Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>